It feels like you're simultaneously intoxicated, hungover, jet-lagged, and in a dream. That disorienting and frightening experience is actually a common one for patients in Canadian hospitals. Each year in this country, 200,000 people who go to hospital may experience delirium, a big jumbling of the mind that can entangle your thoughts, your words, and have you seeing things that aren't actually there. And as Cass Rusi shows us, the key to tackling that problem may lie in understanding just how stressful a hospital visit can be. sometimes helpful for patients to come back and see actually where they have been. Not everyone returns to a place that has caused them so much distress and does so voluntarily. But 53-year-old Robert Van Herpt is part of a unique program to bring him back to a time when his life stopped making sense. His wife Joanne has joined him. 50% I don't remember, 50% I do. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was right. a big experience for your family, right? It was an yeah. emotional yes. roller coaster, I know, for Joanne. Last March, Robert was having a bout of insomnia. A lifelong drinker and smoker, he'd quit both cold turkey. He was also on a new antidepressant medication. That's when he started seeing things, first at home and later in the hospital. The um, hallucinations were very drastic in the evening. Um, overnight, and he was seeing things that weren't there. Oh, just really vivid hallucinations. At one point, he thought he saw a swarm of fruit flies. It was like, do you see that, Joanne? Do you see that? Oh, no, no, no. I said, and I honestly put my arm out, and I said, I can feel them up against my arm. And it was, it was that, that true. Robert's family was told he was in the throes of delirium, a condition that baffles doctors and terrifies patients, young and old. They can see things that aren't there. They can uh, sort of experience emotions that uh, may or may not be real. Uh, they can have, you know, abnormal thoughts about the people who are uh, trying to care for them. Delirium happens when there's a change in brain function that can provoke a severe state of confusion. It can be caused by a number of things. Alcohol is one, but there are other factors. Someone can get mixed up and confused because of a pneumonia, bladder infection, a bout of heart failure, and that can be in someone's home, retirement home, nursing home. Hospitals are one of the biggest culprits. Noisy, intensive care units can be disconcerting and patients often can't sleep. At the Hamilton Health Sciences Centre, a proactive approach is embraced with the aim to prevent delirium before the condition takes hold of the patient. Hello. Hello there, Hildegard. How are you doing today? Hey. The program is borrowed from the U.S. and called Hospital Elder Life Program, HELP for short. The Hamilton Hospital is the first place in Canada to adopt it. 87-year-old Hildegard Peach is in the hospital, recovering from a fall she had at her home. Because we're going to say what today is, right? Today? Yeah. The aid. While she's here, a trained volunteer visits her and keeps her alert, aware and active. Yeah. And you're right, it is the eighth. Simple tasks to keep patients grounded. So far, there the program has helped okay. reduce delirium at the hospital by 30 percent. You can make a difference that allows persons perhaps to not just get out of hospital a little faster, but come out a little bit more functional. So exercise. Yeah, you want to do some exercises? Yeah, of course. But this isn't just common sense. It can also save lives because delirium can be deadly. You may be lying in bed, getting bed sores, getting deconditioned, getting dehydrated, and having complications from all those. Good to see you, doctor. Good to see you, Charlie. People who are frail, have dementia, or are critically ill are at the highest risk. But unlike dementia, delirium comes on quickly, ends just as fast, and can fluctuate over the course of a day. One, two, three. 
There we go. In Halifax, it's all about teaching a new generation of physicians how to spot the signs and tell the difference. Sometimes it's not that obvious. A delirious person can often be silent, but still very sick. It's not uncommon for us when we're following patients through over a few days to find that there's something off, quote unquote, with them. If you can show them the, the many, many things that you can know from someone just by walking in, shaking their hands, uh, engaging in 10 seconds worth of pleasantries, usually that will motivate students to want to figure it out. And can you tell me today's date? Um, today's March um, the 5th, 2018. One year after his nightmarish experience, Robert still has some memory loss. Um, food. Fruit. Dr. Boyd checks his cognitive skills with simple Fun. tests. Uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, repeat this sentence after me. And the cat always hid under the couch when dogs were in the room. The cat always hid under the couch when the dogs were in the room. We are all looking for the magic bullet in terms of uh, treatments for uh, ICU-acquired delirium. So really trying to understand uh, delirium, develop uh, better ways to prevent it, develop better ways to uh, treat it, can really, I think, make a huge impact on long-term recovery trajectories for our ICU survivors. Okay, your time's up. Mm -hmm. Not too many of us there. How did I do? <laughs> You're doing well. Oh, good, good. While he may not be the person he once was, Robert says in many ways he's better than he's ever been, moving on with his life and getting past a time he never wants repeated. Cass Rusi, CBC News, Toronto.